Uh, okay, guys. I've started recording. So we are on the second day of our session. Uh, Manju, could you please mute yourself? Yeah, I'm just. Perfect. Thank you. So, guys, uh, before I start with uh, today's topics, um, I would like to one of you to summarize what we discussed in the initial session, so that I can take it over from there. Any one of you? Uh, so it was regarding all the SCM component related and the uh, SCM how it started and uh, all the data for the area and what the budget will be used for uh, companies. So uh, let's go basic things. Manju, you, 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 Manju your voice is very feeble, Manju. Uh, okay, one minute. Mm -hmm. Are you able to hear now? Yes, yes, much better. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is all related to basic and uh, so how it is started and uh, which uh, purpose it is used and uh, basic uh, components related yes, part of the SSC. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, perfect. Uh, anything else that we discussed, Rohit? So we discussed on the uh, we discussed on the different components. Yep. Okay. Uh, along with those, we have also discussed on the uh, scalability numbers, right, Balu? We have discussed on the numbers as well, right? Okay. I think uh, Balu, you missed the uh, the last part of that session. I hope you've uh, gone through the video. I downloaded. Okay. 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 Fine. So, uh, thanks guys. So, in the first session, um, so I just gave you an overview, right? Like why SCCM, what are the SCM components and a uh, little bit of hierarchy. Uh, and then those numbers, the scalability numbers uh, for doing uh, capacity planning. So, in future, whenever, if you get a chance to uh, kind of design SCCM and build it right from the scratch, then this will definitely help you so that you will know how many uh, management points needs to be created or where you exactly you need a primary site, where you need a secondary site. Based on the numbers from your client, uh, you'll be able to design it, right? Okay, so let's get into the details today. Uh, uh, Balu, uh, can you please mute? Yes. Perfect, thank you. So, in today's session, uh, basically what I've done is, uh, as you can see here, so I've, for your batch, I've created a lab called uh, May DC, May SCCM, and May underscore test 01. So these are the three uh, machines that I've brought up. So in today's session, I will discuss about what are the prerequisites to create um, create a lab, and then I already uh, have taken a video capture, or I can say a screen capture, while I was building this lab. So basically what will happen is uh, if I start building that lab in the class, it will take at least four hours, right? So I don't want to waste two sessions just to talk about how to build the lab. So what I've done, I've taken a step-by-step -step, um, video, whatever I've done, I've taken a video out of, out of it. And then now I'll play that video, just there will not be any voice, I'll just play that video and I'll be explaining each and every step. Wherever it is not recorded, I'll just forward that video and I'll share that video with you so that you can also start building your own lab, right? Th that way we can save time instead of four hours. Wherever it is not recorded, I will be keep on forwarding and I'll just explain the steps which are required. But still, if you want to go through each and every uh, thing detailed, you can have that video with you, right? So let me start with that. So first of all, uh, to create the lab, um, you require a DC plus DNS plus DHCP server. So this is one server that I've created, right? And I've called it as May DC. And the second server will have IAS 
plus SQL plus SCM. Right? So this server I'm calling it as MaceCM. Right? And then what what we need is we need a third VM which will be a client machine. Okay, it can be anything. So I've taken Windows 7 in this case. It can be Windows 7, Windows 10 or anything. So I have, I've taken Windows 7 so that I can show you uh, in the later sessions uh, migrating this machine from Windows 7 to Windows 10, right? As part of OSD. So that way it will also help you. So I've taken Windows 7. So by end of these sessions, uh, we'll migrate this client machine from Windows 7 to Windows 10 using SCM. So I'm calling this as may underscore test zero one. Okay. So are you aware of uh, this Hyper-V, all of you, or is it new? Uh, are you yeah. new to Hyper-V? I'm aware of. I'm, I'm new to Hyper-V. I just uh, heard a name, but I'm not aware of what actually it is used. Okay. Uh, this is. Who? Oh, this is Manju. Manju, you have you said you are new? Yes. Uh, I just heard the name. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how it is utilized. Okay. Okay. Uh, Rohit, you are aware of it. Balu, you are aware of it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Fine. So, um, so Manju, have you have you worked on uh, VMware earlier? Uh, VMware. I knew, I know about the VM then, uh, not worked, uh, but uh, I knew uh, the basic things, uh, little basic things that work mm -hmm. properly to be used, not like a huge, but to Okay, okay. Now I just wanted to check if you, if you can, if you know how to create VMs and all, because uh, to build the lab, you need to know how to create VMs, right? So, are you aware of creating VMs or creating a virtual switch? Uh, not about uh, virtual switch. VMware creation, uh, I myself have done uh, when I was building the lab. Mm -hmm. I mean, building a lab along with the server and setting up the SCM once. That way, I know SCM. Uh, sorry, uh, this VM how to create a VM. So not for the uh, switch anymore. I'm not used this type of thing. Okay, okay, okay. No worries. So, I'll, uh, anyways, uh, I'll go through that video. Uh, which I've created for you guys and in that um, I'll show you how to create these VMs and the virtual switch and other stuff. So let me start playing that. Guys, are you able to see the screen? Okay, so as you can see, uh, on this, uh, this was created um, uh, yesterday, uh, and uh, basically, when you see here, there are only my previous VMs, right? Uh, one Windows 10 and Win Server 2016. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a new VM here. New virtual machine. So this is for the DC. So I'll just skip uh, any, anything which is not required. I'm just showing for the first time. You give the name, you give the location for it. Right, you go with the defaults. You, uh, in the VM um, memory, you can give at least one GB minimum, or if you have two GB, you can just go two GB if you have more space, more RAM. So I just went with the defaults, right? So one VM is created, made DC. Now I need to um, give it the ISO, right? This is second VM. Um, I guess this is for the May CM thing. Uh, 
I guess I gave here 4 GB. Similarly, I've created one more VM for client machine. Okay, so I haven't given uh, the ISO because I just gave the uh, gave them names, but uh, I have not given the server 22 ISO or Windows 7 ISO, as well as I have not even given any switch details to it, the network details. So I'll do it now. So the first step is uh, giving it the uh, server 22 ISO. You go to settings. Okay. You go to the IDE controller one with DVD drive. So I already I have already downloaded all the ISOs. So if you want, I can share that link to you to download the different ISOs. Okay. That's it. Now we can start the VM. Yes, you can share the ISO links uh, whenever possible. Yeah, I'll share the links to you. I'll uh, so that you can also download them. Okay. So from here, uh, building a server is uh, quite common thing. I don't want you to, to, I don't want to take you through each and every step of building a server. That is just going next, 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 right? So once you start it, that's it. Uh, so what did I do later? So similarly, I gave. Uh, ISO even for the Windows 7 machine and SIM. Okay, Windows 7 is also built. And this is the SCCM server. So SCCM server and the domain controller for both I've given server 2012 R2. Uh, for Windows, uh, for test machine I have given uh, Windows 7. Right? Because if I, wait a minute, let me go back so that I can explain on the switch part, okay. So if I don't uh, create a video out of it and just do all these steps uh, during the session, we would have wasted like four hours, right? That's the only purpose uh, of creating this video. Okay, so now since we have started all these three servers, okay, and they're they're building up. So what we need to do is we need to create a virtual switch. So why is a virtual switch required, first of all? So virtual switch is, uh, first of all, you need to have a connection, right? All of these needs to have an IP address and they need to be, uh, they need to be in, in a network so that they can communicate with each other, right? At the same time, you want to make sure that these devices are not, uh, you know, are not getting connected to the outside network, the external network, and they are not um, creating any, kind, any sort of disturbance uh, to the outside network. Why? Because say suppose if you have a DHCP server which can give IP addresses, right? Which can release IP addresses. Now, if you connect this server to the normal network and if you take this laptop to your office, there are chances that this, your DHCP server start communicating with your external um, devices, right? So we need to try to make sure that this is completely isolated, right? And also even the DNS server or uh, the domain controller. So if your domain controller is uh, is allowed to access from outside internet or outside, um, uh, you know, your uh, office network or home network, there are uh, chances uh, that your uh, other machines try to uh, connect to this machine, right, uh, to the domain controller or to the DNS or DHCP. So it is, it is good to completely make this isolated. So in order to make it isolated, what we do is we go to Virtual Switch Manager. So in Virtual Switch Manager, you have an option to create either an internal, let me pause it here, see. As you can see, you can create either a external, internal or private. So when you say external, 
this is required this kind of switch is required when you want to have internet connectivity so what we'll do is we'll create an internal switch so internal switch is only for communicating between these three and the base machine the base host machine private is the communication just between these three you don't want uh, any communication even from the base host machine we need to have a connection from the base to ho base host machine as well because sometimes you wanted to copy something from your base machine into one of these vms so you need to have that connectivity right so we'll go with internal and external we will not use private we will need internal and external so for the external thing uh, why we need external is for example for sccm server right when you are installing scm server uh, different components it requires to get few updates from internet right and say suppose uh, not only while building it even after you uh, you completely build it and you wanted to push patches so where where, where will it uh, download these patches it has to connect to microsoft update website the web server and start downloading the patches from there right so your sccm server requires to connect both to your domain controller and test machine as well as it also requires to connect to the external network so that it can start downloading patches or components and other things so what we'll do here is we'll create uh, so i have created one external wi-fi right so this external wi-fi switch i'll use it for sccm server and i'm creating one more switch now called as internal may and that switch i'll use for all these three All you need to say is create internal and just name it. In case of external switch, what you will do here is instead of selecting this internal network, you will select external network, and you will make sure if you have multiple NICs, make sure you are giving the the right NIC which has internet. If you have just one NIC, that's fine. It will be automatically selected. Make sense? Any questions here? Creating switches. Okay. Cool. So once the switch is created, I think uh, we just need to wait for these three machines to build up. So what I've done is, uh, once the switches are created, I go to the uh, domain controller, May DC settings, and here I will select internal switch, internal May. That's what we have created, right? Similarly, I give switches for other other devices as well. Okay. So the machines are building up. I think the DC is up. SCM server is also up. Windows machine is still building up. Okay. So what I've done is I've renamed these machines. So by default, when you build a machine, so its name, it will give some uh, random name, right? So I've renamed it as MayDC, the server name. This may be the seven device. So I've renamed, as you can see, it has got some random machine name. So this is May SCM server. So even I've renamed this to SCM. Okay. So now what I'm doing is I'm giving a static IP address. So before we build a DHCP server, so usually what we'll do is we all know that DHCP server will give IP addresses to our um, to our client machines uh, and also to the servers, but Say suppose if you want to, um, uh, you, you need to give static IP addresses to the servers because the server IP address should always be the same, right? Uh, it is fine if your client machines every uh, nine days or 90 days, if they keep on getting new IP address or every time they uh, connect to the network, if they get a new IP address, that's fine with the client machines. But the server should always have the same IP address. So what we are doing here is to the domain controller and the SCM server, I'm giving IP addresses manually, static IP address. And then while I create the DHCP server, I'll tell the DHCP server not to give these two IP address to any other machines. I'll tell that uh, just uh, exclude these IP address from its uh, pool, right? So here I'm just giving manually, I'm giving the IP address uh, to the DC and SCM server. I give 12.1 uh, to DC and 12.2 to SCM server. 
guys are you able to follow me or do you have any questions here I guess still here everything is uh, pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now what I'm doing is on domain controller, I'm promoting it as a, a DC. Till now we just we have just built a server 2012 R2, right? And we renamed it as May DC and we gave it a static IP address so that's all we have done till now so now what I'm doing is I'm promoting it as a DC so for that where will we go we go to server manager add roles right and we select active directory domain services so as you can see here active directory domain services that's what we select and if there are any features uh, which are required to support it yes we'll select that as well So it will take some five ten minutes to build this. So let me forward it. Okay, so it has completed. So after this is completed, there will be some uh, post uh, activities. So wherein it says you need to promote the server to a domain controller. So for that, uh, let me restart the server and start it back and do the post configuration steps. Okay, so what I've done here is, so when you, you will find a yellow triangle here, when you open the server manager, that means there are some post configuration steps are there. And as this is a new forest, right, I'll select the third uh, radio button here, add a new forest and I give name as maylab.com, that's the name I've given to the domain, let me forward. Okay. DNS server. So since we have not uh, created any DNS server, so it will automatically uh, create a DNS server. I haven't selected DNS, right? I've just selected Active Directory Domain Services. But in order to have a domain controller, there needs to be a DNS server in your forest. Since there is no other DNS server, the say the and we don't have any other servers, right? Member servers. This is the very first server, so it is building the same server as DNS as well. Let me forward and show the final result to you. Okay, so now I'm logging in as maylab slash administrator. So guys, uh, this is very important. The domain slash administrator. So going forward, whatever you, we do in our lab, we need to make sure that we are doing it with only domain slash administrator account. Because say suppose if you, um, uh, build anything like the IIS server or the SQL server, especially the SQL. If you build the SQL server, install and configure it using, um, wait a minute. So if you build the uh, SQL server in uh, using, um, you know, uh, your local administrator, so later when you're trying to build your SCCM server, uh, it will not um, have the appropriate rights and your SCCM server installation will fail. So what we are, uh, in ideal scenario, in, uh, in the enterprises, what we'll do is, we'll create a separate service account uh, to build the SQL server, to build the SSM server, we'll create a separate account uh, which will have uh, uh, required privileges, right? In this case, since it is a lab, what we are trying to do is uh, the highest privileged account, which is the domain administrator account, we are using it across all these servers, okay? So now what I'm doing is on the same server, domain controller, already DC has been built, DNS has been built automatically. Now I've selected DHCP, I just went to add roles and features again and I've selected DHCP this time. Just forward and now we have DHCP server as well. So again you have a post configuration to, con to complete the DHCP configuration. Yeah. 
you just need to commit the authorization okay I think okay that video has stopped there let me close it now so once that is done um, I went to DHCP management console right create a new scope name it as primary scope or anything you wish so I'll, gi I'll give the IP address from 192 .1 to 12.10 so that's some 10 IP addresses and I'll make sure that our two servers which are uh, SCCM and DC 12.1 uh, and 12.2 are excluded from this uh, pool I gave the least duration for 90 days so that we don't have any disturbance during the sessions for at least for this batch and I also configured the scope options like the router default gateway and then the DNS server so any client machine which will get uh, IP address they will also have this DNS uh, server details as well as the default uh, gateway details Right. there is no win server and that's it the scope is activated so we're good here now right so currently may SCM the same server is in work group so I add it to the domain mail app similarly I add the Windows 7 so machine also to the mailapp.com so if I check now the DHCP server address leases so you know 1.12.1 uh, is DC 12.2 is SCM now as you can see 12.3 has been given to uh, mate s01 the client machine it automatically got this IP address and 12.4 uh, mano 007 that's my uh, you know uh, my base machine the host machine so even my base machine got an IP address as I told you uh, since I have selected internal network um, my DHCP server can still talk to my base machine right so what else I have in this video okay that's all cool so guys now we have this setup ready right now let's talk about what is required for SCCM server so what you need to do is the very first thing is um, extend schema okay this is what you need to do on the domain controller so can one of you explain me what is schema we'll talk about why why it is required and how to do it anyone okay so basically uh, when you want to integrate um, okay let me go to the basics of schema like have you ever looked into the uh, users and computers and uh, acted at users and computers and have you looked into their properties the attributes yeah. yes yes, yes huh. okay so typically what is the attributes that you see uh, when you go to any user properties or computer properties like it, it its email id or its location where it is located the the device right so, some kind of properties are there for each object that you have in active directory there are some kind of attributes right now what will happen is how say suppose you wanted to um, 
create a exchange server right so the default attributes that a user uh, account will have or a default attributes a computer object will have in active directory it will not have all these different properties that are required for an exchange server to work right say suppose um, see uh, you are staying in uh, malkasgiri right so you if if somebody wants to know um, your pin code details okay so you'll have your pin code details so if i if i'm considering you as an user object so where is this user staying user's location user's pin code user's telephone number so all these are different attributes by which i will know where exactly this user is similarly if i'm trying to install exchange server right in in our environment exchange server may require say suppose it requires your uh, some some kind of uh, id some unique id number right it it requires your um, mailbox details right so for in order for those mailbox email id and all on your user object if exchange server wants to fill these details it requires those attributes first of all right there should be a placeholder where exchange server can write there should be those attributes first of all so that exchange server can put some values into it right so who are de- who is defining these attributes like what kind of de- attributes will be there for each and every o- object who is defining it the schema is defining it right so by default in the schema schema is nothing but the active directory structure right by default the schema will have a default kind of uh, uh, parameters or you call attributes or you call classes so those are the default values it has now if you want to create more placeholders those are just placeholders so that any other server can write values into it right so if you want to create more and more placeholders you need to extend your schema you are getting my point guys yes perfect so say suppose i'll give one more example like you might have used um, link or skype for business right so when you are using link for your uh, internal messaging and uh, chatting with your uh, colleagues so even if you want to implement link in your domain first of all what uh, what does link require link also requires some of the values to assign to each and every user account it has its own sid kind of a value so that based on that sid it knows um, which user is uh, having what kind of privileges can he just share his uh, desktop or can he have a video chat or can he just have a normal chat so all those attributes if a link has to assign to it it needs to have some kind of a sid value right so where will it write the sid value on the if it has to write it in active directory when you right click and go to user account properties if there are no attributes to it where will it write so it has to create some new attributes new classes there so that next time it can write there right so how do you create those new attributes and new classes to create that you have to extend the schema right guys so the very first step we do is extending schema when you are trying to uh, install any kind of an enterprise tool like as i have given couple of enterprise tool examples right i have given uh, exchange server link and similarly even for scm you need to extend that schema so uh, let me go to the actual server so this is my domain controller and i'm just opening active directory use and computers see if you click on any of these computer objects right and go to properties you have attributes here attribute editor right you can see all these attributes so this is what exactly i was talking about see by default it has this admin count admin description so these are the attributes which comes by default with the active directory so that since it has this attribute any other software using um, any scripts or any software or manually you can set these values and later on you can use it for your purpose right for that particular application to work but if this itself is not not there you have to create it using extending schema i think now it makes complete sense to you because you can see it manually here right guys fine now let's yes uh manor why 
uh, so only for the attributes uh, we need to do that extend the schema right yes just to create classes and attributes okay i mean where do we use it uh, further in the classes we required uh, um, some attributes and classes to be identified something no so what we are doing here is um, you wanted to integrate your SCCM with Active Directory. So you already Active Directory users and computers are there, right? Now, if any new computer is joined to your Active Directory, how will it know to which SCCM server? Because now you are creating a hierarchy like CAS server or primary standalone server, primary server is there. And again, there uh, inside that primary server, there could be multiple management points. So how will a computer know to which management point it has to talk to or to which uh, site server it has to talk to? right so once it is part of sccm that means once it has the client agent installed so after that anyways your sccm will take care of it but even before client agent is installed so how are you going to ensure that these client machines are talking to the right server to download and uh, you know to start communicating with the uh, server for the initial time for the first time so for that what we are doing here is once we integrate these two that is first of all what we do is we extend our ad schema then we publish our SCCM data onto this AD schema. So what it will do is it will create new classes, new attributes and start publishing the information. For example, if uh, if there is a server uh, like uh, primary site server in Hyderabad, okay? And there are few machines in Hyderabad, client machines and servers. So these client machines and servers, as part of their attributes, it will identify, okay, now I have to talk to, there is a SCM server which is in Hyderabad, I need to talk to it and start downloading my client agent and proceed further, right? So in order to have that information, what we are trying to do is we are populating these attributes and classes. So we are not actually populating it. SCCM will automatically do it. All you need to do is just extend the schema and make a provision for SCCM to populate all these details. SCM as part of installation, it will automatically populate all this information to Active Directory. Make sense, Rohit? Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, so the very first step, uh, let's go back to our page. So very first step, what we are doing is uh, you wanted to extend schema in order to integrate with AD. And what we will also do is we'll create something called system management container. So in Active Directory, you must have created uh, OUs, right? Uh, for OUs or containers, those are just these new folders. If I have to talk in layman language, those are, those are just as folders, right? as good as folders. So what you're uh, doing here is, you'll create a system management container in Active Directory. You'll give all the privileges onto that system management container, right? And then you are extending schema. So basically what we are doing is, we are making sure that SCCM can publish Active Directory data at one place. So in order for SCM to publish all that data, we are creating one placeholder, which is called system management container. And on that system management container, we are giving permission to the SCM server so that when it tries to write something onto Active Directory, it has all the permission. So it, it requests the required permissions. And on top of this, we are also extending the schema, making sure that all the new classes and new attributes are created. So these are the three steps that we need to do. So let me take you through that video. So first I go to ADSI edit because I'm creating a new container here. So under system, as you can see, CN is equal system. Under system, you right click and create new object or new container. Yeah, new object and then select container here. And the name should be exactly system space management because SCCM will look for this container and it will write values under this container. Okay. So I created the exact name system management container. And now I need to give privileges permissions onto this. So for that, what I'll do is I'll go to active directory users and computers. and I will delegate control.
see all this is the initial prerequisites that we are doing it right later on you don't need them you didn't you don't need to uh, come to active directory every now and then and do all these settings okay so now we have created system management container and on top of it i'm delegating control uh can you tell me anything about that container uh, what what actually it is uh, used yeah that's what i was telling right so since we have created this container today so what will happen once you build the sccm server right it will start creating those details it will start publishing these scm server details like uh, this is scm site server this is the scm uh, boundaries uh, these are the roaming boundaries so all that information is populated under the system management container so that any user which is which has scope only to active directory see typically users and computers have scope only to active directory it doesn't know what is scm right now since you are publishing the information into active directory these machines which are already in active directory can gain access to it will know okay what is the scm so where is my nearest scm server and who is my management point what is the different boundary groups that are available so all that information if very first uh, when a device is just joined to uh, active directory it will know all that information from there so that information is getting populated now so currently i'm just creating a blank uh, container right so you will see after once we create scm uh, installation i'll come back here i'll show you it you will find some automatically some populated values here i'll come back and i'll show you okay these are the new objects which are created does that help manju okay so yeah perfect so what i'm doing here is i'm uh, giving scm1 uh, scm server mail app uh, we have scm server right i'm giving that server uh, control on to this system management container because it is that server which is going to write values under this so create a custom task to delegate okay this folder existing folder and all, all the new objects so for on all the new objects you are giving control to it you will select all the boxes and give full control so basically we are giving uh, access to create new objects or read or write all these different objects right you are giving permissions on all of them just under system management container it's not on the entire active directory it's only on the system management container you giving full control to ssm server so i just wanted to show you the attributes so these are the default attributes right and forward it okay so now how do you extend schema so what we have done just now is we have created a system management container we have delegated all the permissions then what is the third step which is left over extending the schema so how do you extend schema it is a very small step it is just a one single step so what you do is um, on the domain controller you have, you have to do it on the domain controller okay first of all it is not a, an scm server it has to be done on the domain controller second uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, have that exe extend ad schema exe is there that exe will be there within your sccm source files within the scm cd or the binaries right so what i have done is i am opening the scm binaries okay the initial source file and i will show you the extend ad schema dot exe so the moment you double click and install it you will get a log file under your c drive saying if there are any issues while extending schema and it will also show you what are the new classes and attributes it has created so as far as i remember it will create four classes and 14 attributes okay i'll show you those classes and attributes now and uh, there are two ways one is you can double click the exe so it will automatically extend the schema or else say suppose in your uh, uh, environment so if it has a change control right if you have a change management and you need to take approvals for that and all that so what you will do is there is one dot ldf file as well okay so when you open that ldf file uh, in notepad it will show you all the classes and attributes it is going to create so what you can do is you can show that uh, you can uh, attach that dot ldf file uh, to your uh, change con change management tell them that okay i'm by extending schema these are the new class and attributes that uh, we are going to create and take a change management approval and after that you can even uh, extend schema using that ldf okay or you can uh, double click the exe both are the same one and the same they will create the same uh, classes and attributes 
So let me show that process to you now. So this is my SCM source files. I went to SMS setup bin x64 and there you will have extid schema.exe. Okay, extad sch. So that's the exe, and I will also show you the ldf file. Config mgr ad schema dot ldf, right? So if you open this ldf file. It will show you those four classes and 14 attributes that I was talking about. So as you can see here, you have the class name MS SMS management class, right? Let me, okay, let me pause it somewhere. So it says that this attribute updates the MS SMS management point class. So it is creating a new class called as management point, right? Under that it has some attributes, the SMS version. Right. Uh, similarly, uh, let me forward. We'll see one more attribute. Okay. So SMS source forest. This is one more attribute name. Right. Like this, there are 14 attributes which will tell you what is where is your management point is, what is the source version, what is the forest in which it is, and as I told you, the boundaries, all that information. Right. Let me pause here. See here it is giving one more attribute which is SMS SMS assignment site code. So which what is the site code that the client machine has to connect with the assignment assigned site code, right? So these are the different uh, classes and attributes I was talking about. Now what I will do is I'll just double click the extend ad schema.exe. So before uh, I do that. Let me tell you if you are doing this in your production environment only thing you need to do is try to get a change management approval first thing second do it on a domain controller third run it with schema admin account all right let me pause it here so what will happen is uh, typically in your uh, production environment you will have domain administrator enterprise administrator similarly you have a schema administrator account okay use a schema administrator account to extend the schema in our case, since we have only one domain controller that itself is a domain that itself is a forest, right? So that is the reason we are using the domain administrator account. So domain administrator account itself is a schema admin in this case, right? So in uh, production environment, you will have one schema admin for your entire forest. So you need to replicate whatever you're doing to all the DCs, right? So that is the reason you will not use one specific domain administrator. You will use the schema administrator so that the changes that you are doing here will be replicated to all the DCs. Whereas in, in lab, you have just one DC. You can uh, your domain con uh, domain administrator account itself is the schema administrator as well. Right guys. So that is very important when you are doing it in the production environment. Okay, so the moment you double click it under your C drive, a log file will be generated. And you can check that log file whether uh, all these classes and attributes have been created or not. Okay. Uh, extend in C minus sense, uh, like we will uh, open that configuration, we'll add uh, our IPs or uh, related machine details or server details. Uh, the log is it no I'm not I've not done anything right so what I've done here is uh, what I've done here is I've just double click the extend ad schema dot exe so what it's what it is doing is it is creating new classes and new attributes that's it it is just creating a new placeholders I'm, I've not put any IP address or any other details there right so once the schema has been ex extended ex uh, you consider this as just creating placeholder okay See, you have bought a new house, buddy. Okay, in your new house, you want to arrange all your uh, clothes and books and everywhere. So what you'll do? First of all, you get the carpenter and you create a good uh, cupboard, right? So you already have a room there. So in the room, you are creating your cupboard so that it's a placeholder for tomorrow when you get into that house, you can put your clothes and uh, books in inside that. So it's just a placeholder, 
similarly here also what we are doing by by doing extending extension of schema you are creating new attributes those are just like placeholders so tomorrow when your SCCM server will run is installed completely it will populate the information there so that every computer will know to which site code it belongs to or to which uh, management point it has to talk to we are not doing anything else SCM will take care of putting all those values there you are just a carpenter who is creating a placeholder Is it okay. is it clear, Manju? Yeah. Okay. So I've just run the extend schema.exe and you can see there is ext ad sh dot log file. Guys, uh, at any point of time, uh, whatever I explain is not clear to you. Please feel free to ask again and again. So I wouldn't mind to explain again and again. Don't think that uh, I've already asked him a couple of times, so it wouldn't look nice. Even if you don't understand after I tell you twice or thrice. Feel free to ask for fourth time. Uh, actually, uh, like uh, I felt it is little bit uh, little faster uh, when I went and maybe I think when I'm doing the practical thing, then may I have more questions? I'm not sure about uh, any questions now, but mm -hmm. uh, when I do it, then may I have I'm, so just that's why I'm uh, sure okay to. Sure, sure, Manju. So what will happen is, see, extending AD schema, whatever we are doing now, is a very basic step for any other kind of enterprise tool installation. So if you're installing Exchange Server, Link, SharePoint, or any other thing, uh, collaboration tools, right, within your environment, if you're using an enterprise tool, what will happen is, the very first step is, this tool needs to integrate with your Active Directory. Right? There should be a connection between this tool and your Active Directory. In order to create that connection between these two, you have to extend your AD schema with respect to that particular tool. So when I'm doing extend AD schema.exe here, this is only extending AD schema with respect to the classes and attributes that are required for SCCM. It is not creating any other new class and attributes for Exchange Server or any other enterprise tool. Right? It just created these, as you can see, there are four classes, one, two, three, four. One is SMS site server locator point, SMS management point, and roaming boundary ring. So these are the four classes it created. And then it created attributes like site boundaries, uh, default MP, device management point, MP name, MP address, so that your client machines would know what is MP name, MP address, and all these details, right? So this schema is very specific to your SCM server, uh, to your SCM environment. So tomorrow, if um, uh, you wanted to, uh, install exchange in, in your environment, you will not extend AD schema using this exe. Your exchange uh, installation media will have its own ext.adsch.exe, right? So this is not something new to SCCM. It is, it is the same kind, same concept that extending AD schema for any enterprise tool. But here in this exe, you have respect to four classes and four attributes, uh, 14 attributes required for SCCM, right? <coughs> So as you can see the log file, it clearly says that successfully extended the Active Directory schema. Right, guys? So that's all. Uh, it's, it's just a two minutes activity. Nothing much we need to do here, but this is important. And once you extend your AD schema, say suppose you have extended AD schema for your SCCM 2007 environment. Tomorrow, if you migrate SCM 2007 to 2012 or 2012 to 1511 or even the 1702, you don't need to extend your schema again and again. Once if you have extended your schema, that's enough, right? Because extending schema is like creating placeholders. That is enough. Tomorrow, if you're migrating to the latest version, so the latest values or if anything needs to be uh, updated, the SCM will update into these existing classes and attributes, right? So till today, there are no new classes and attributes have been created by SCM. Say suppose in future, SCM latest version of SCM, if it has any new attributes and classes, then uh, Microsoft will release a notification saying that, okay, if you want to install this latest version of SCM, you have to extend your schema again. So until now, there's nothing like that. So starting from SCM 2007 till uh, the latest version of 1702, you don't need to extend your ready schema. All It is still using the same four classes and 14 attributes, okay? Guys, I hope you're clear with this part. So if I have to put this as integration to Active Directory. So what are the steps I did here? I've created a system management container. Delegate control. 
right? And then extend AD schema. So with these three, I have integrated it to Active Directory. Now, what is the next thing that I need to do? I have to install IAS server roles and features. And where will I do this? I have to do this on SCM server, right? Because till now I have done this, all these three steps, I have done them on DC. Now I'm doing this on SCM server. Okay, so I'll show you what are the uh, features that you need to install as part of a IAS. So how do you do it from your server manager, add roles and features. So earlier we have done uh, Active Directory Domain Services, DHCP, right? So this time we'll do Web Services and we are doing it on SCM server. Okay, the web server, IAS. So the default features which comes with that, select that. And here, there are some additional features that you need to add. So one is .NET Framework 3.5, complete. Similarly, .NET Framework 4.5. Then you have to install Background Intelligent Transfer Service, BITS. So uh, guys, have you worked on uh, BITS or you know what this BITS protocol is? Uh, actually, I have not worked on it, but uh, unfortunately, when I was installing a CCM, I missed this BITS uh, application. Mm -hmm. So, after the installation, uh, when I'm starting the CCM installation, it, uh, it shows error. me, uh, it shows an error saying that it's BITS, uh, BITS is not configured. Yep, yep. So I was confused uh, by, I was confused uh, what is this bits and everything. Mm -hmm. Again from googling out and everything I could found this service. Okay, but, uh, uh, but do you know why is it used and what is it for? No, no, no actually, no. Okay, okay. So uh, th see what will happen is, uh, th thanks Rohit, thanks for that uh, information. So what will happen is when you're trying to install your SCCM actual installation if you miss any one of these what I'm just uh, what I'm doing now it will either throw a warning if it is safe to ignore it will throw a warning or if it is mandatory it will just error out and it will stop there until unless you fix it you cannot proceed with your SCM installation right what you can also do is even before installing SCM you can in, uh, run a prerequisite checker so SCM comes with a prerequisite checker you can run that so even before installing you can see that if any of these components are missing and come back and uh, uh, enable those components okay so for this bits so basically um, have you ever done a co copy paste right you all we all we have all done this copy paste from one server to another server so what is the protocol which you which is getting used when you're trying to copy from one server to other server what is the protocol which is triggered one is the TCP IP we know the other one is SMB right so when this SMB protocol and TCP IP are uh, triggered so basically what will happen is uh, it is allowing you to copy some data from one server to another server, right? So during this, say suppose there is a network outage. So what will happen? Whatever you have copied is just abruptly stopped, right? That, that that's one issue. What will what you will face when you are copying data, right? If there is any network outage or if there is a server downtime or anything happens, whatever you have copied is lost. Similarly. Uh, if you want to copy to a particular server and you wanted to uh, tell it like okay use only 10% of the bandwidth because say suppose if you are copying trying to copy some 1 terabyte of data or maybe not that use maybe some 5 GB of data when you are trying to copy 5 GB of data from one server to another server what it will do is the moment you copy paste it will try to use 100% of the available bandwidth and start copying immediately right so you don't have an option to throttle your bandwidth say that okay use only 10% of it 20% of it like that you cannot throttle the bandwidth right guys so by default SMB protocol is just a default protocol which will help you help you in copying and pasting data whereas bits is an background intelligent tra uh, transfer service wherein it will help you in resuming from where you stopped in case of copy paste say suppose there is a network out outage it will make sure that it resumes from where it stopped and it will continue from there Right. Similarly, uh, even for the other thing, what we're talking, um, 
the bandwidth throttling, right? So even for the bandwidth throttling, you can ensure that using bit service, you can ensure that only a 10% or 20% of your bandwidth is consumed and rest uh, everything is still uh, made available for other services to run, right? So such kind of background intelligent transfer service, that's why it is called as background intelligent transfer. Su such kind of technology or whatever is included in copying pasting data and that's it definitely required for SCM because what is that SCM does predominantly it copies the applications the patches or uh, the, the exe files right the OS image so it is always copying data from one server to other server or from the server to the client machine right so that's what predominantly SCM will do so it definitely requires bit service to be enabled otherwise SCM will not work right uh, Rohit, now does it make sense to you? Uh, sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, yeah, I could understand. Okay, cool. Okay, so the other thing we need to do here is uh, remote differential compression, RDC. Okay, I think that's all on this features list. Uh, have you done RDC or have you missed RDC as well? RDC, I've done it. Okay. So again, uh, I will not go into deep into each and every feature, but uh, for your understanding, RDC is required. Like, uh, what will happen is, um, again, this is also related to copying data. So, uh, say suppose um, you have already di di distributed um, Adobe Breeder application. Okay. Now there is a small file update onto Adobe Breeder, right? So if you are using the normal protocol, so what will what it will do is it will directly copy paste the entire data. Even if there is a small file chain, it will copy the entire data, right? Whereas using RDC, remote differential compre uh, compression. So what it will do is, first of all, it will compress the file. Okay. It will also check for the differential data. So what is here and what is not there. So it will find the differential data and it will only copy the differential element there. Okay, and after copying that differential element, it will also have a signature, it will create a signature so that it will check the signature, right? Okay, what is the signature on the source location and what is the signature on the uh, uh, destination location, target location? So that when both are matched, that means the data has been copied perfectly. So because as I told you, I'm telling you again and again, like SCM server is predominantly copying data, right? So when it is trying to copy this, uh, distributing it from the SCM primary site, say suppose it distributed, Adobe Reader uh, package to distribution point. Already Adobe Reader package of 100 MB, let's say 100 MB, 100 MB package is already there on the distribution point. Now you just made a change to it, which is just a 1 MB file change. So instead of again copying the entire 100 MB to all uh, to all these DPs, it will only uh, check the uh, differential element. Okay, there is only 1 MB change. Let me copy only 1 MB to the DP. And also after copying, let me create a signature at the source location and the destination location and match these signatures. If both are same, that means I have copied the, all the 101 MB data and that's how it will do, right? So for that, SCM will depend on remote differential compression, RDC, right? So all these features, what we are currently doing, uh, enabling them, these are all different prerequisites required for SCM. You don't need to get into details of why, and why each and every uh, feature is required, but since I've worked on them and I've troubleshooted many issues, so I know uh, where exactly which feature is helpful while troubleshooting that way i know but you don't need it uh, in your day to day life okay so here you'll go with your windows authentication so i assume we'll use windows authentication here and you'll go with um, ias uh, management uh, compatibility complete That's all you need here. So now you're good to install your, um, you know, IS. So here what I'm giving is I'm giving the location for few of these components that I've selected if they are not available. So I'm just giving the DVD location to it so that it can pick it from there. You just need to give the SX, SX, SXS path. That's all. So let me forward. There's nothing that here. We just need to wait. So let me forward for that installation to complete. Okay. 
that's it so that's all you need to do on IAS server guys any questions on IAS roles and features on our uh, for the uh, uh, at once we can install all the um, roles uh, I mean uh, IAS uh, BITS and everything at once only itself right yeah, yeah you can install them at once or if you forgot and you can come back and again install them so it, it's okay you, even if you install all of them together uh, it is not going to uh, create any problem okay fine yeah okay okay any other questions Manju uh, that uh, previous menu uh, previously uh, just uh, you've done some SX related so mm -hmm. I didn't uh, observe or understood what actually uh, that uh, which path it is no no it is my windows server 2012 r2 dvd right so basically what i've done is so while create while i've selected all these different features right roles and features so sometimes what will happen is it will throw an error saying that i cannot install all these roles and features so for at least one of those features i require the source binaries see it happens even uh, not only for is many times you must have seen when you're trying to install any windows feature it will say that i need the windows dvd uh, to proceed uh, and uh, to proceed to install the feature right so same thing happens here so just as a safety measure what I've done is even before it throws an error what I've given here is I've given an alternate source path and I gave the DVD path okay let me go back to that video and show it to you So here you have specify an alternate source path. So he, he, as you can see here a warning it says do you need to specify an alternate source path one or more installation selections are missing source files on the destination. So on this server if one or more selection files whatever you have selected installation if that doesn't have the required files you are saying okay specify an alternate source path and then you are giving the your DVD location here. Make sense buddy? Okay. Okay. I mean uh, if we just directly select the DVD, uh, also it will take uh, what actual path it requires. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm just giving the exact location because I know where the all these uh, features will be. All the features will be in the SXX folder. So I directly gave it the direct folder so that you know, um, the installation will be much quicker rather than checking for the entire DVD for these files. Okay. Okay. Uh, Manor. Uh, yes, sir. Wait. Sorry, uh, in, uh, if we don't configure DHCP server also, is it fine um, because uh, for the, I have only configured three servers, sorry, uh, two servers and one client where I have given the IP address manually. Okay, so your question is, uh, is it okay if you don't configure DHCP? Is, is that your question? Yes, yes, yes. See, uh, if you don't configure DHCP, it is fine for... Um, you know the initial classes like uh, all the all the things like software distribution software update management compliance management everything will work without thing but uh, your OSD operating hello. system deployment hello sorry can you just repeat it I uh, my speaker has not uh, okay, okay okay sorry so what I'm telling here is like without DHCP you can install um, and configure all the different components of SCM like your software distribution you can make use of software distribution software updates management inventory management compliance management but when it comes to operating system deployment you wanted to deploy OS so the bare metal in a VM which doesn't have any operating system right that may uh, that uh, VM needs to contact to your DHCP to get the IP address only then it gets IP address then it will contact your SCCM server and it will start uh, installing the new OS operating system right so only in that scenario you require the DHCP server otherwise if you give static IP addresses that is still fine okay uh, but uh, it's a bare metal right what you said is it's a bare metal mm -hmm. so when when we put it into our domain I mean our network which we configure mm -hmm. uh, that does not have any OS okay mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. my question is so my question is uh, we will how can we uh, how can a bare metal can connect to our DHCP servers yeah 
So what will happen is since the DHCP server is on the same network, right? The DHCP server is on the same network. Your bare metal machine is also on the same network. Okay. So that doesn't have any operating system. Now, as part of operating system deployment, there's something called PXE, right? PXE boot. So you go to your uh, uh, bare metal machine that is with no OS machine and you click F12, right? So when you click F12, yes. you're asking it to do a network boot. So the F12 means go and check for a DHCP server on my network. That is what F12 means, right? So when you're trying to do a network boot, the first thing it will do is it will check for a DHCP server on this network. So if there is any DHCP server on that network, it will go and contact it and get an IP address from that. So after that, once it gets the IP address, so now since it has got IP address, then it will talk to the boot server or uh, SCM server and proceed with the further steps, right? But say suppose if you have, don't have a DHCP in that case, how will a bare metal will get an IP address, right? It will not get any IP address, right? Unless and until, um, you know, if it is a, a VM and if you're trying to give a static MAC address and static IP, if there are any other scripts to give a static uh, IP address to it, other than that, by default, you cannot give an IP address to a bare metal machine, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's the reason you require DHCP. It is the only reason you need, require DHCP in the lab. In the production environment, that's different, but in lab, that is the only reason you require DHCP server. Okay. Okay? Okay, thanks. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, so we are done with IAS, all right? So now we are left with what are the requirements for SIM? You need ADK, either you can install 8.1 or the latest one, I think you have 16.07, I guess, and then you have 17.02, right? 16.06 or 16.07, ADK you have. So after ADK, we'll do SQL. So these are the only two more steps left over for our prerequisite installation for today's class. So ADK, so have you worked on ADK or do you know what ADK is? Rohit or Manju? No, I am not aware. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, you are also not aware of it. Okay, so basically um, this assessment and deployment kit, okay, uh, ADK is assessment and deployment kit. Uh, what they used to do is like initially when you are doing operating system deployments, right, uh, we used to use so many tools like uh, individual tools like ImageX, Okay, DASM or um, uh, Windows PE. So these are different tools and boot images which we used to uh, use to create, to capture the image or to deploy the image, to make any changes to a Windows image. We used to have some tools, right? Way back in uh, 2008, 2010, that's when, right? So after that, what they've done is, instead of having these tools as separate components, they have clubbed all these tools together and they've named it as ADK. At one point of time, it used to be called as Wake. Uh, after Wake, they changed it to WADK. Then the current name is ADK, okay? So basically what this ADK will have, it will have all the different tools that are required for deployments, Windows client deployments or server deployments. So what are the tools which are required for deployments? Like as I said, ImageX is required to capture an image. DASM is required to service an image, right? Or uh, Windows PE is required to boot an image. So these are different kinds of tools which are required for your OSD. Don't worry. Anyways, when we are getting into OSD, I'll explain about each and every tool, like what I'm talking now, DSM, what is DSM, what is ImageX. I will talk about all of those tools. But for now, you just understand that some tools are required for operating system deployment. And those tools were, uh, were used individually at one point of time. And later on, they were bundled together and they have given a name to it called as Wake. After that, Wake has turned into WADK and currently it is called as ADK. Okay, Manju, is that clear? Uh, no, uh, I just uh, confused. I didn't understand actually. Okay, uh, tell me wh what is that you understood? So from there, I'll take it over. Uh, no, like uh, I didn't actually understand what uh, meant. Uh, maybe you can just re explain once. Okay, okay. So basically what happens is, see, when you're trying to do an operating system deployment, right? So when I say operating system deployment, you are trying to migrate a Windows uh, 7 machine to Windows 10, right? Or you're directly uh, building a bare metal machine that has no operating system, nothing. You just bought a new laptop. There is no operating system. You wanted to install Windows 10 on it. 
right so when you're doing that you in the due course of building a new image and deploying that image there are some tools that you use like imagex disp and uh, windows pe usmt so there are different tools that you use during the deployments so these tools at one point of time they are uh, they are available separately so that you have to download each one of them from internet separately and start using them that is how they used to be there okay so later on what they have done is all these different individual tools which are required for deployment they have bundled them together and named them as adk right so the, the if you download this adk and install it even before installing accm if you download this adk so what it will do is it will create uh, it will download all those individual tools which are required for accm and it will install on this scm server so later when you are doing your operating system deployment your ccm server will will start using these tools because they are already installed on the scm server itself as part of adk make sense uh, manju uh, yes what is the abbreviation of this adk it is assessment and deployment toolkit okay. assessment and deployment okay okay uh, and, uh, Mm -hmm. do, do we uh, do we have an option to create this by uh, ourselves uh, while doing this, or uh, it has already uh, there uh, ready-made and just we need to utilize it? It is already ready-made. You just need to download and install it. Okay. 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 So, uh, Rohit, I think Rohit, you prefer calling Sai, right? Sai. So, what are the? Uh, is it clear to you? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, okay. So let's proceed and show you how to install ADK. So again, we do this on the SCM server. I'm just um, enabling my other NIC card which gives me access into to internet so that I can download ADK on this server. Okay, this firewall thing is, um, I've just disabled firewall. Okay, this is nothing to do with ADK, but I've disabled firewall on all my uh, lab servers. Typically, I do that so that during communication between your servers, uh, DC to SCM or SCM to the client machine, uh, the firewall should not be a blocker. So I typically uh, stop a turn off the firewall and also stop the firewall service. This is nothing specific to ADK, but it was just captured. Sai, you are saying something? Uh, no, nothing. Okay. So even when you are building your lab, I would suggest you to um, stop and disable this service, Windows Firewall, so that uh, you will not face any issues in the lab while, while, start, while communicating between the clients and servers. Okay. So let me forward and see. Um, see, okay, I've searched for ADK for Windows 10. So this is the location. As you can see here, download the Windows ADK. Okay, and you have Windows 10 version 1607, and also you have Windows 10 version 1702, 1703. Okay, which is the latest one. So I'm installing this 1607. So I'm just pausing here uh, to show you. So. Uh, I'm just reading out what, what it says. So download the Windows ADK for Windows 10 to get the new and improved deployment and provisioning tools used to automate a large scale deployment. So the Windows ADK includes, so it has this assessment performance toolkit as well as it has this deployment tools as I told you the WinPE, SysPrep, DISP and other tools that you can use to customize and deploy Windows 10 images, right? So what they will do is every time a new version of, uh, new version of Windows 10 is released or new client uh, OS is released, with respect to that they will update all these tools and they will bundle them together and they will give it a new name called as ADK for uh, Windows 10 version 1703 or tomorrow if 1706 or 1707 is released, again this will be updated, okay? So basically they're updating individual tools which are used for deployment and bundling them together and giving it a name, that's it. So earlier we used to have this ADK for Windows 8.1. 
right so now we are using 16071703 so let me forward it i've just downloaded it okay let me pause here so these are the different features which comes as part of adk so windows assessment and deployment kit right so out of this you have application compatibility toolkits and performance and all other things but for what is required for uh, SCCM, what are mandatory i'll select only those i'll just remove the other thing other tools so the performance toolkit and uh, is not required windows assessment service are not required and your SQL Server 2012 Express is not required because anyways we are installing SQL Server on HCM, right? So this SQL Server 2012 Express is not required. So all that I'm selecting here is deployment tools, WinPE, ICD, configuration designer and USMT. So once we get into operating system deployment classes, you will understand why these are required. So currently just understand that some of some tools are required for uh, SCM. So I'll explain them uh, during the OSD sessions. okay so this will take some 40 minutes of time so let me forward that 40 minutes excuse me guys so that's all in uh, adk right so ADK has been installed. Now the leftover component is SQL. Guys, I'm I I think you're clear about all this. You don't have any questions till now, right? I'm proceeding with the SQL installation. Yeah, Manju. Yeah, yeah, nothing. Okay. So what I've done is I've uh, selected the SQL Server ISO. So again for SQL Server I have used uh, uh, SQL Server 2012 uh, uh, I guess SP1 yeah 2012 SP1. So I will also share the link for to download this ISO. Okay. So the links that I have to share with you are uh, Server ISO 2012 R2 if you don't have it and then the SQL Server ISO. Okay. I'll show the share. Uh, Mm -hmm. A ADK 10 version, uh, the link that also, can you please share it? No, that's already there in the video. So I've just uh, clicked on Bing. Okay. I, just, I just searched on Bing and I've downloaded it. Okay, anyways, I, I can share that okay. link as well. Sure. Sure, sure. Thanks. Okay, so here also I've just enabled uh, uh, the internet to make sure that while installing, if it requires anything. This is SQL Server 2012 Express Edition. No, this is not Express Edition. This is the standard edition. Uh, standard. Okay. What what uh, edition do we need to install? Because I missed this part. You need to install. SQL wasn't. Yeah, you can. Sorry. You need to install SQL Server uh, standard. Standard is enough. If you can install enterprise or data center, that would be great. But for lab purpose, SQL Server standard is enough. Hello. Guys, can you hear me? I guess there's a network outage.
Uh, guys, can you hear me now? Yes, Mama, we can. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, there was an air uh, power loss. Okay, so the I've just connected to my inverter. Okay, so where are we? Rohit, we were discussing something, right? You asked some. You asked the question. Yeah, regarding the standard skill uh, standard. Uh, yes, yes. So in, in, in the, yeah, so in your lab, uh, you require SQL Server uh, 2012 uh, standard is enough, standard edition. Uh, in production, uh, you'll install either enterprise or data center. So what I've done here is I've installed standard edition, but an evaluation copy, right? It's not a licensed copy, an evaluation copy you can download and you can install it. Okay. So I hope you're able to see my screen. Yes. Okay, okay. So basically what I'm doing here is, uh, if it requires any uh, updates to be installed, uh, I've connected my SCCM server to internet, so automatically during the installation process, if it finds that any new updates are released and it requires, so it will automatically download and install as part of the installation as well, right? So this SQL installation will take at least uh, 40, 45 minutes. So there are a couple of things which needs your input. So I'll show, I'll emphasize on those so that um, you will be able to install on your own. Okay, wait a minute. So every time at a, each and every stage, it will do a, a rule check, SCM, uh, sorry, SQL. So if any one of these components is not passed or if there is, there is any warning, okay, make sure that uh, that particular thing has been uh, taken care, okay. So by default, it will be passed, all those, uh, just in case if you have any issues with your server, if your server already had an SQL um, instance. Hello. Guys, can you hear me? Hello. Manju and Sai, can you hear me now? Yes. Hey, sorry. Yeah, yeah, so whenever power goes off, my uh, Wi-Fi router it will turn off, right? It will turn off and turn it uh, turn on back. So I'm losing the network. Sorry about that. Uh, like, uh, will it be constant or again now it will happen? I cannot guarantee on the power router, right? So whenever the power goes. No, no, no. <laughs> so if there are any trouble uh, from your end, then you can take it uh, 
tomorrow because now some you are here speaking this feeling to can no buddy no 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 see i already have inverter i have all the uh, power supply but what happens is whenever current goes off it will take a fraction of second for my inverter to immediately turn on right so within that fraction of second my, my router switch off and switch switch on's back right it just happened now so currently if there is no other power outage then we are fine so whenever power outage happens yeah, yeah, yeah. five minutes only then there is a problem Yeah. Okay. And okay. Just to uh, tell you that if you are feeling a difficulty there. Nobody. No. No. Thank you. Thanks for that. Uh, no issues. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's proceed. So what I'm telling here is, so every time uh, while you're installing your SQL Server, so it will uh, check for few of these uh, rules. It will make sure that all of them are uh, available. Say suppose if any one of them the status is not passed. Okay. If there are any issues with your um, uh, SQL Server uh, installation. then you need to work on them so by default all of them will be in past state at least in the lab they will be in the past state in the production environment if you are already there is an existing sql server and you are trying to install something on top of it in such cases you will face issues right but in the lab since we are doing everything fresh uh, you will not find any issue here the sql server installation okay so i'm going with the evolution copy Okay, just accept the default settings. So the only thing that you need to do here is okay, go with SQL Server feature installation. Okay, so this is the only thing there you need to uh, where it needs your inputs. So you will select database engine services, then you will select reporting services native, and finally uh, you will have let it scroll down. Okay, you will select the management tools complete. So these are the only three settings that you need. Okay, I'm just repeating once again: database engine services, right? Then the reporting services native, and management tools complete. So these three settings needs to be enabled while installing SQL Server. That's it. Nothing else is required here. And rest everything is just go by default. So you will have this default instance MS SQL Server, which is the default instance. Just go with that. now in the next uh, window you need to give the service accounts so there what you will do is you will give all uh, service accounts you will give your domain administrator account here let me pause it for a minute and explain so you have four services here sql runs on four services the server agent server database engine your reporting services and server browser okay server browser is disabled don't worry about it the other three which are in manual automatic and automatic these three services by default it is with your nt service accounts right now what you will do here is you will change here uh, here uh, instead of your nt service account here you will give your domain administrator which is mailab/administrator and password and make this as automatic and same goes with other two mailab administrator password and automatic right all the three should be the same in production what you will do here in production environment if you are doing it in your own company so what you will do is as i told you you will have a separate service account for installing sccm right you will use the same service account which you are installing uh, which you are using to install sccm the same service account you will use to install uh, uh, this sql server as well so here in the sql services you will put the same service account say suppose if the service account is uh, instead of domain administrator say suppose it is sccm admin is the service account or scm service account right you will give that scm service account and scm password in the production environment in the lab give the domain administrator and password makes sense so i'll show you how to give that you just browse so in this case i'm giving the domain administrator account So then you'll make all these three services automatic. 
So that two are already automated. The first one is manual. Make it also automatic and give the password. So that's all you need to do here. So typically we use service account here instead of domain administrator accounts because Okay, sorry, I was on mute. So what I was telling, so by default, um, instead of domain administrator, there's one more reason why you give the service account here. As you have seen there, I've given my password manually. I've entered my password manually there. Say suppose tomorrow, there are chances that your accounts passwords get reset, right? Uh, based on your policy, uh, once in 90 days or once in 180 days or whatever, uh, your policies get uh, reset, uh, your passwords get reset. Whereas for service account, passwords are not never reset, right? So that's also one of the reason. Otherwise, what will happen tomorrow if your password gets reset again, you have to uh, come back to the services and make sure um, you change the password here. Otherwise, uh, these services will fail. It will try to these services will try to run with the old password and it, they will lock your account. Right. So whenever your passwords are changed again, you have to come back and make changes on the SQL server. So instead of that in production, what you will do is you'll use service account because service accounts passwords are never reset. So that that's also one of the benefits of using service account for this, right? So again here uh, just go with the default which is Windows authentication mode and select the current user as the SQL Server administrator which is the mail app administrator the domain administrator is the SQL Server administrator. So that's all you do here. That's it. No other settings from your side. It's just that 40 45 minutes of installation of all these things. I'm just forwarding everything. That's it. So, SQL installation is completed. So, uh, right, SCM prerequisites. So, basically, what we have done today is I've shown you what are those servers that I've built a domain controller, SCM server and the uh, VM machine. I've shown you how to create the network switch so that these three can communicate with each other and also I've shown you to create a switch which will enable this SCM server to connect to the external internet. Then on the DC uh, in order to integrate to Active Directory we have created a system management container in ADS edit. Then in Active Directory use and computers I have delegated control to SCM server right I have given it full control permissions on that object as well as any new objects created under system container on all of them I have given full control. After that I uh, have extended AD schema which had created some four classes and 14 attributes right all this has been done on the domain controller. On the SCCM server I have installed IAS uh, and there are some of the features we have selected like .NET 3.5, .NET 4.5, bits, RDC right so those are the things which are required. And then we have installed ADK1607. You can install 8.1 or 1703. So we have installed uh, 1607. And uh, after installing ADK, in, even in ADK, we have selected only the things which are required for deployment. So we have once selected uh, things like performance or assessment tools. And finally, we have installed SQL Server. And uh, the things that you need to select in SQL Server are database engine services, reporting services native, and management tools complete. So those three settings are required. And apart from that, uh, during the SQL installation, you will make sure that the service account, uh, you replace it with your domain administrator account and give the password and make sure that all these three services are run automated, right? So that completes the SCCM prerequisites installation. So tomorrow what we'll do, we'll install the actual SCCM uh, server and I will go through the SCM installation. So that's all we have for today. So any questions guys? No. Okay. Good to hear that. Manju, any questions yeah. from your side? Uh, no, as I told you, uh, when I'll be doing it, then may I, if I have anything, I will just ask you. Sure. So, um, guys, I, I would suggest you to start building your own lab. Okay. If possible, tonight, right, so spend some time. Uh, start creating your own lab. So just follow what and all steps I just told here, right? So I will immediately upload this onto Google Drive. So by by the way, uh, were you guys able to download uh, from Google Drive the previous video? Yes, uh, I downloaded. It, it is uh, clear. Okay, you are getting both audio and video, right? Yes. 
Ah, okay, okay, cool, cool. So I'll upload even this as well. Um, okay. So I hope uh, maybe you can mm -hmm. maybe you can upload the uh, videos uh, uh, which you've shown uh, inside this video. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I, that's the whole plan. That is the plan. So that's the reason I've uh, created those videos. Those are for you only. So I'll upload those individual videos, uh, this main video, as well as even in this prerequisites text file, I will add a few more links to download the ISOs and I'll upload all of them onto Google Drive. Okay? A anything else from my side for today? Uh, actually, uh, we need, uh, as you told, that Azure uh, link you're going to provide uh, where I can create a lab since I cannot create in my machine, so that, that uh, link I need, uh, and along with the ISO image, uh, uh, where we can download uh, those link also. Sure, sure. So Azure link is like okay. Anyways, I'll send that link Azure link as well. But what you need to do is first of all you need to log in to uh, register yourself on that Azure uh, site, and you need to create mm -hmm. a 30 days uh, free trial subscription. So you, you just uh, go with the free trial subscription, okay? with a new email ID uh, and after that you will be able to create new VMs on the Azure site okay so let me know if you are if you're facing any problem or issues while creating VMs on Azure okay yeah so maybe if possible uh, just provide the steps uh, where how I can so if, if there are any uh, like uh, it's complex complex uh, to do all the uh, setup mm -hmm. for Azure Sure, sure. So if possible, what I'll do, if possible, I'm not sure, but if possible, what I'll do, I'll just create um, an account on Azure and uh, I will create a couple of VMs just to show you how to create account and VMs and if possible, I will record that video and upload it. Yes. So that uh, yes, you can just go through that. Okay. Yeah, so I will follow and I will do, uh, I'll try myself the uh, same way. Yeah, yeah. So if possible, I will do it if time permits. Otherwise, uh, if time doesn't permit, I will uh, guide you to any blog or article where you have step-by-step -step, uh, screenshots, right? If it is yes, not possible, I will also. send you a blog or article, okay? Yes, that also will work. Okay, buddy. So thanks for your time, guys. Hope uh, today's session was beneficial for both of you. Okay? Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.